welcome to our Got to Eat pizza learning journey. And today I'm going to be using the Uni Pro. I'm going to go make my pizza now. Ready for the pro. Okay, so I've made my pizza. Hope I've timed this okay. It's got a bit to go to get to 400, but this is the second cook, so I'm uh, going to see what happens here now. So I'm just gonna check the temperature of the oven. Whoa. <laughs> Why does it always surprise me? Like, oh my gosh, there's a flame. Shouldn't, oh, what a mess. Like my stone isn't hot enough either. Oh my gosh, I've just blown it all away. Pizza's waiting there. It's only been 45 minutes, but that stone has gone right down. Oh, can't believe I did that. Honestly, that was so sticky. It's the dawn. And, uh, I tell you what, the sound of that thing has been going for four hours and my neighbours have got quite a small garden, so I don't know if they're cutting like massive trees down or something. So I hope uh, like all that doesn't fall down on me or something. I mean, three hours, no, four hours of that noise. I have just like a little electric handheld for all of my hedging. I don't know. These are like top notch machines they use using over there. Anyway, the nice thing about pizza making is not intrusive, it's very quiet and peaceful, and you can get on with it nicely in your garden and nobody knows about it. So this is the same dough, can't believe it's the same dough, with more flour. And uh, let's see how this cooks. A little bit more to the back. It's so dark in here, I can't tell if my crusts are cooking, that's the only problem. I think you get used to these gas fires, you can like see what, what your crusts are looking like. Here yeah, you're pretty much guessing. 
Is it cooked or is it not cooked? And I think there's just one more place that it needs to cook and that's at the top. That a try? So these flavors together, the substitute Italian cheese I used uh, and also the mozzarella. There's grano padano, green fried peppers. I fried the peppers in the steak juice. The person with that machine or persons I've been using those machines for four hours and as soon as I've stopped cooking, they've turned them off. <laughs> it's all nice and tranquil out there now. Typical. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. So what a difference this dough makes when I just put a bit of flour on it. I mean, compared to my previous cook, same flour, same um, 45 minutes difference, same toppings, everything. But one I used more flour, and the other one I didn't. I didn't rolling pin this, it's all hand. I think it's because it's so sticky that I got it quite thin, but it wasn't easy to do, but it was easier with a bit of, bit more flour. I know I've cut back on my flour use, so that's good, but I can't go like minimal. <laughs> it's just not working at all. So yeah. Nice big piece. I'm just looking at this base and the interesting thing is I don't have a burnt rim cook and I think the reason why is because I used less flour so that burnt rim I was creating every time I was using too much flour now I'm using less flour I don't have well I think <laughs> I don't have that that burnt rim that's good and I got it thinner Dinner. Yeah, 
This is a really tasty pizza and you can see the light shining through it. Ooh. Lovely pizza, lovely flavours, lovely steak, all of the cheese and the, the um, fried green on it, fried green pepper. Very tasty, very nice, very nice. Again, there's no way this little ever happens to you, just get some tongs out and just get them back on there. and I think it's gonna that look like a rain cloud to you. Looks like one to me. I seriously never thought that I'd get this very sticky dough off the peel. Anyhow, I'm in this learning place right now, so I'm not sure where I'm going with this, but I thought I'd show them to you so you can see where I'm going to see if I'm doing it right or wrong, which is really helpful to me. So thank you, and uh, it's very nice. 